So when it comes to the modulus of complex numbers, there are several properties that are important to know. First of all, we need to know that if you take the modulus of a complex number, that's going to be the same as the modulus of its conjugate. To prove that, we uh, can say the modulus of z equals the modulus of x plus yi. Uh, which is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and then the modulus of z conjugate is equal to the modulus of x minus yi which is equal to the square root of x squared plus negative y squared which is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared so we can see that those are the same thing the second property is this modulus of z squared is equal to z times z conjugate. And so the modulus of z is x squared plus y squared. So the modulus of z squared is just going to be x squared plus y squared. And if we take z times z conjugate, that's going to be equal to x plus yi times x minus yi and that will give us x squared plus xyi pl uh, minus xyi minus y squared i squared which is just x squared plus y squared and so we can see that that is also true and then the other property we have here that I'm not going to prove in this video is this idea that if you multiply two complex numbers together and take their modulus, uh, it is the same as multiplying the modulus of each individual complex number together. And the same thing goes with division. That same property works if you have a number divided by another one, and then you have the modulus of that. It's the same as taking the modulus of each one individually and then dividing them. And then this... Uh, property here is just a generalization of this one and it basically just says if you have a finite amount of complex numbers you can multiply them all together and take the modulus and that's the same as taking each individual modulus of each complex number and multiplying them together and so we're just going to do two examples of this so here we're told to find the modulus of z sub 1 to the 10th and z sub 2 to the 10th and hence find the modulus raised to the 10th power of z sub 1 over z sub 2 and so we know from this property which uh, says that if you have a complex number raised to the nth power and the modulus of that, that's the same as the modulus of the complex number raised to the nth power. So that tells us that this is equal to the modulus of z sub 1 to the 10th, which, looking at z sub 1, we know that is square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared to the 10th power, which is the square root of 25 to the 10th, which is 5 to the 10th. So then, for the modulus of z sub 2, we do the same thing. It's equal to the modulus of z sub 2 to the 10th power, which is the square root of 1 plus 3 to the 10th, because the square root of 3 squared, the square and the square root, root will cancel each other. That gives us the square root of 4, th 4 to the 10th, which is 2 to the 10th. And then over here, we have z sub 1 over z sub 2 to the 10th, so we know the modulus of z sub 1 is equal to 5 to the 10th. Modulus of z sub 2 is equal to 2 to the 10th. This is going to equal the modulus of z sub 1 to the 10th divided by the modulus of z sub 2 to the 10th because uh, the property above told us that we can do that. So that's going to give us, I'm sorry, to the 10th and to the 10th as well because that's what we found over here. And uh, that will give us 5 to the 10th, 
divided by 2 to the 10th, which is 5 halves to the 10th power. So these are um, the main properties for the modulus of a complex number that you need to know.